a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Raising the flag on Iwo Jima. Raising the flag on Iwo Jima is an iconic photograph taken by Joe Rosenthal on February 23, 1945, which depicts six United States Marines raising a U.S. flag atop Mount Suribachi during the Battle of Iwo Jima. In World War II, the photograph was first published in Sunday newspapers on February 25, 1945. It was extremely popular, and was reprinted in thousands of publications. Later, it became the only photograph to win the Pulitzer Prize for photography in the same year as its publication, and came to be regarded in the United States as one of the most significant and recognizable images of the war. Three Marines in the photograph, Sergeant Michael Strank, Corporal Harlan Block, and Private First Class Franklin Sousley were killed in action over the next few days. The other three surviving flag raisers in the photograph were Corporals Rene Gagnon, Ira Hayes, and Harold Schultz. Both men originally misidentified as flag raisers had helped raise a smaller flag about 90 minutes earlier, and were both still on the mountaintop, and witnessed, but were not part of the specific moment of raising the larger flag that was captured in the Pulitzer Prize winning photo. All men were under the command of Brigadier General Harry B. Lever's Edge. The image was later used by Felix de Weldon to sculpt the Marine Corps War Memorial, which was dedicated in 1954 to all Marines who died for their country, and is located in Arlington Ridge Park, near the Ord White Zilgate to Arlington National Cemetery in the Netherlands Carillion. Photo History On February 19, 1945, the United States invaded Iwo Jima as part of its island-hopping strategy to defeat Japan. Iwo Jima originally was not a target, but the relatively quick fall of the Philippines left the Americans with a longer-than-expected lull prior to the planned invasion of Okinawa. Iwo Jima is located halfway between Japan and the Mariana Islands, where American long-range bombers were based, and was used by the Japanese as an early warning station radioing warnings of incoming American bombers to the Japanese homeland. The Americans, after capturing the island, weakened the Japanese early warning system, and used it as an emergency landing strip for damaged bombers. Iwo Jima is a volcanic island, shaped like a trapezoid. Marines on the island described it as, a large, grey pork chop. The island was heavily fortified, and the invading Marines suffered high casualties. Politically, the island is part of the prefecture of Tokyo. It would be the first Japanese homeland soil to be captured by the Americans, and it was a matter of honor for the Japanese to prevent its capture. The island is dominated by Mount Suribachi, a 546 feet dormant volcanic cone at the southern tip of the island. Tactically, the top of Suribachi was one of the most important locations on the island. From that vantage point, the Japanese defenders were able to spot artillery accurately onto the Americans particularly the landing beaches. The Japanese fought most of the battle from underground bunkers and pillboxes. It was common for Marines to knock out one pillbox using grenades or a flamethrower, only to come under renewed fire from it a few minutes later, after more Japanese infantry slipped into the pillbox using a tunnel. The American effort concentrated on isolating and capturing Suribachi first, a goal that was achieved on February 23, four days after the battle began. Despite capturing Suribachi, the battle continued to rage for many days, and the island would not be declared secure until 31 days later, on March 26. Two Flag Raisings There were two American flags raised on top of Mount Suribachi. On February 23, 1945, the photograph Rosenthal took was actually of the second flag raising in which a larger replacement flag was raised by Marines who did not raise the first flag. Raising the first flag A U.S. flag was first raised atop Mount Suribachi soon after the mountaintop was captured at around 10.20 on February 23, 1945. Lieutenant Colonel Chandler Johnson, commander of the 2nd Battalion, 28th Marine Regiment, 5th Marine Division, ordered Marine Captain Dave Severance, commander of Easy Company, 2nd Battalion, 28th Marines, to send a platoon to seize and occupy the crest of Mount Suribachi. 1st Lieutenant Harold G. Schreer, executive officer of Easy Company, who had replaced the wounded 3rd Platoon Commander, 
John Keith Wells, volunteer to lead a 40-man combat patrol up the mountain. Lieutenant Colonel Johnson had taken the 54 by 28 inch 140 by 71 centimeter flag from the battalion's transport ship, and handed the flag to Shreer. Johnson said to Shreer, If you get to the top, put it up. Shreer assembled the patrol at 8 a.m. to begin the climb up the mountain. Despite the large numbers of Japanese troops in the immediate vicinity, Shreer's patrol made it to the rim of the crater at about 10.15 a.m. Having come under little or no enemy fire, as the Japanese were being bombarded at the time, the flag was attached by Shreer and two Marines to a Japanese iron water pipe found on top, and the flagstaff was raised and planted by Shreer, assisted by platoon sergeant Ernest Thomas and Sergeant Oliver Hansen at about 10.30 a.m. had actually raised the flag. The raising of the national colors immediately caused a loud cheering reaction from the Marines, sailors, and Coast Guardsmen on the beach below and from the men on the ships near the beach. The loud noise made by the servicemen and blasts of the ship horns alerted the Japanese, who up to this point had stayed in their cave bunkers. Shreer and his men near the flagstaff then came under fire from Japanese troops, but the Marines quickly eliminated the threat. Shreer was later awarded the Navy Cross for volunteering to take the patrol up Mount Suribachi and raising the American flag and a Silver Star Medal for a heroic action in March while in command of D Company, 228 Marines on Iwo Jima. Photographs of the first flag flown on Mount Suribachi were taken by Staff Sergeant Louis R. Lowry of Leatherneck Magazine, who accompanied the patrol up the mountain, and other photographers. Others involved with the first flag raising include Corporal Charles W. Lindbergh, Privates First Class James Michels, and Raymond Jacobs, Private Phil Ward, and Navy Corpsman John Bradley. This flag was too small, however, to be easily seen from the northern side of Mount Suribachi, where heavy fighting would go on for several more days. Raising the Second Flag the photograph taken by Rosenthal was the second flag raising on top of Mount Suribachi, on February 23, 1945. On orders, from Colonel Chandler Johnson, passed on by Easy Company's commander, Captain Dave Severance, Sergeant Michael Strank, one of 2nd Platoon's squad leaders, was to take three members of his rifle squad and climb up Mount Suribachi to raise a replacement flag on top. The three took supplies or laid telephone wire on the way up to the top. Severance also dispatched Private First Class René A. Gagnon, the battalion runner for Easy Company, to the command post for fresh SCR 300 walkie-talkie batteries to take to the top. Meanwhile, Lieutenant Albert Theodore Tuttle under Johnson's orders, had found a large flag in nearby tank landing ship USS LSD 779. He made his way back to the command post and gave it to Johnson. Johnson, in turn, gave it to René Gagnon, with orders to take it up to Shreer on Mount Suribachi, and raise it. The official Marine Corps history of the event is that Tuttle received the flag from Navy Ensign Allen Wood of USS LSD-779, who in turn had received the flag from a supply depot in Pearl Harbor. Severance had confirmed that the second larger flag was in fact provided by Allen Wood even though Wood could not recognize any of the pictures of the second flag raises as Gagnon. The flag was sewn by Mabel Sauvageau, a worker at the flag loft of the Mare Island Naval Shipyard. First Lieutenant George Greeley Wells, who had been the 2nd Battalion, 28th Marines adjutant officially in charge of the two American flags flown on Mount Suribachi, stated in the New York Times in 1991, that Lieutenant Colonel Johnson ordered him to get the second flag and that he sent René Gagnon his battalion runner to the ships on shore for the flag, and that Gagnon returned with a flag and gave it to him, and that Gagnon took this flag up Mount Suribachi with a message for Shreer to raise it and send the other flag down with Gagnon. Wells stated that he received the first flag back from Gagnon and secured it at the Marine Headquarters command post. Wells also stated that he had handed the first flag to Lieutenant Shreer to take up Mount Suribachi. The Coast Guard Historian's Office recognizes the claims made by former U.S. Coast Guardsman Quartermaster Robert Resnick, who served aboard the Ad Iwo Jima. 
Before he died in November 2004, Resnick said Gagnon came aboard LSD 758 the morning of February 23 looking for a flag. Resnick said he grabbed a flag from a bunting box and asked permission from his ship's commanding officer Lieutenant Felix Melender to donate it. Resnick kept quiet about his participation until 2001. Rosenthal's Photograph Strank with his three Marines, and Gagnon, reached the top of the mountain around noon without being fired upon. Rosenthal, along with Marine photographers Sergeant Bill Jean Ost and Private First Class Bob Campbell were climbing Surabachi at this time. On the way up, the trio met Lowry, who had photographed the first flag raising, coming down. They considered turning around, but Lowry told them that the summit was an excellent vantage point from which to take photographs. The three photographers reached the summit as the Marines were attaching the flag to an old Japanese water pipe. Rosenthal put his speed graphic camera on the ground so he could pile rocks to stand on for a better vantage point. In doing so, he nearly missed the shot. The Marines began raising the flag. Realizing he was about to miss the action, Rosenthal quickly swung his camera up and snapped the photograph without using the viewfinder. Ten years after the flag raising, Rosenthal wrote, Sergeant Jean Aust, who was standing almost shoulder to shoulder with Rosenthal about three feet away, was shooting motion picture film during the second flag raising. His film captures the second event at an almost identical angle to Rosenthal's shot. Of the six flag raisers in the picture Ira Hayes, Harold Schultz, Michael Strank, Franklin Sousley, Rene Gagnon, and Harlan Block only Hayes, Gagnon, and Schultz survived the battle. Strank and Block were killed on March 1, six days after the flag raising, Strank by a shell, possibly fired from an offshore American destroyer, and Block a few hours later by a mortar round. Sousley was shot and killed by a Japanese sniper on March 21, a few days before the island was declared secure. Publication and Staging Confusion Following the flag raising, Rosenthal sent his film to Guam to be developed and printed. George Jaden of Hendricks, Minnesota, was likely the technician who printed it. Upon seeing it, Associated Press photograph editor John Bodkin exclaimed, here's one for all time, and immediately transmitted the image to the AP headquarters in New York City at 7 a.m. Eastern Ward time. The photograph was quickly picked up off the wire by hundreds of newspapers. It was distributed by Associated Press within 17 and one half hours after Rosenthal shot it, an astonishingly fast turnaround time in those days. However, the photograph was not without controversy. Following the second flag raising, Rosenthal had the Marines of Easy Company pose for a group shot, the Gung Ho shot. A few days after the photograph was taken, Rosenthal, back on Guam, was asked if he had posed the photograph. Thinking the questioner was referring to the gung-ho photograph, he replied, sure. After that, Robert Sherrod, a Time Life correspondent, told his editors in New York that Rosenthal had staged the flag-raising photograph. Time's radio show, Time Views the News, broadcast a report, charging that, Rosenthal climbed Surabachi after the flag had already been planted. Like most photographers, he could not resist reposing his characters in historic fashion. As a result of this report, Rosenthal was repeatedly accused of staging the photograph or covering up the first flag raising. One New York Times book reviewer even went so far as to suggest revoking his Pulitzer Prize. In the following decades, Rosenthal repeatedly and vociferously denied claims that the flag raising was staged. I don't think it is in me to do much more of this sort of thing. I don't know how to get across to anybody what 50 years of constant repetition means. Gene Ost's film also shows that the flag raising was not staged. Mistaken Identifications President Franklin D. Roosevelt, upon seeing Joe Rosenthal's flag raising photograph, realized the image would make an excellent symbol for the upcoming 7th War Loan Drive to help pay for the war and order the flag raisers identified and sent to Washington, D.C. After the fighting on the island ended, using a photographic enlargement, René Gagnon identified four other flag raisers in the photograph besides himself, but refused to identify Ira Hayes as the sixth flag raiser, because Hayes warned him not to. 
Gagnon revealed Hay's name only after being brought to Marine Corps headquarters, and informed that he was being ordered by the president to reveal the information and that refusing would be a serious crime. President Roosevelt died on April 12, 1945. The three surviving second flag raisers, identified then as Bradley, Gagnon, and Hayes, met President Truman on April 20 at the White House before going on the Bond tour which began on May 11 in New York City. Hayes had drinking problems during the tour and was ordered back to his former combat unit in Hawaii on May 24 before the tour ended on July 4 in Washington, D.C. The Bond drive was a success, raising $26.3 billion, twice the tour's goal. Harlan Block and Henry Hansen Gagnon misidentified Corporal Harlan Block as Sergeant Henry O. Hank, Hansen in Rosenthal's photo. Initially, Bradley concurred with all of Gagnon's identifications. On April 8, 1945, the Marine Corps released the identification of five of the six flag raisers including Hansen rather than Block. Susley's identity was temporarily withheld pending notification of his family of his death during the battle. Block's mother, Belle Block, refused to accept the official identification, noting that she had changed so many diapers on that boy's butt. I know it's my boy. Immediately upon his arrival in Washington, D.C., on April 19, Hayes noticed the incorrect identification in the photograph. When he was interviewed about the identities in the photo by the Marine colonel assigned to the flag raisers, and told him that it was definitely Harlan Block and not Hansen in the photograph. The public relations officer then told Hayes that the identifications had already been officially released, and ordered Hayes to keep silent about it. Block, Sousley, and Hayes were close friends in the same squad of 2nd Platoon, E Company, while Hansen, who helped raise the first flag, was a member of 3rd Platoon, E Company. In 1946, Hayes hitchhiked to Texas and informed Harlan Block's father and mother that Harlan had, in fact, been one of the six flag raisers. Block's mother, Belle, immediately sent a letter that Hayes gave her explaining the error to her congressional representative Milton West. West, in turn, forwarded the letter to Marine Corps Commandant Alexander Vandergrift, who ordered an investigation. John Bradley, upon being shown the evidence, agreed that it was probably Block and not Hansen. In January 1947, the Marine Corps officially concluded and announced it was Block in the photo, and not Hansen. Harold H. Schultz and John Bradley The Marine Corps made a public announcement on June 23, 2016 stating that Marine Corporal Harold Schultz was in the Rosenthal photograph of the flag-raising and Navy Corpsman John Bradley was not. Schultz and John Bradley were both present at the first and second flag-raising and Sousley only the second raising. Bradley, who died in 1994, gave few interviews, at times saying that he raised the flag, pitched in to raise the flag, raised the second flag. Bradley was usually tight-lipped after the war about his wartime experiences, including both flag raisings, and did not attend Iwo Jima veterans' reunions. He often deflected questions by claiming he had forgotten. During his 47-year marriage, he only talked about it with his wife Betty once, on their first date, and never again afterwards. Within the Bradley family, it was considered a taboo subject, and when they received calls or invitations to speak on certain holidays, they were told to say he was away fishing at his cottage. One of the few interviews he did was in 1985 at the urging of his wife, who had told him to do it, for the sake of their grandchildren. Following his death in 1994, his family went to Mount Suribachi on Iwo Jima in 1997, and placed a plaque in memory of John Bradley, flag raiser, at the spot where the flag raising took place. At the time of Bradley's death, his son James claimed he knew almost nothing from his father about his wartime experiences. James Bradley spent four years interviewing the families of all the flag raisers, and in 2000, published Flags of Our Fathers, a definitive book on the flag raising and its participants. This book inspired a 2006 movie of the same name, directed by Clint Eastwood. Schultz died in 1995. Photographic comparisons gathered on the first and second flag raising which were made public in November 2014 by Eric Krell, a history buff and collector of World War II-era Marine Corps memorabilia, strongly suggested that John Bradley was not one of the actual six flag raisers. According to this research, 
Franklin Sousley was in the fourth position instead of Bradley, and Harold Schultz of Los Angeles was in the second position, previously attributed to Franklin Sousley. Initially, Marine Corps historians and officials and others were not willing to accept these findings. On May 2, 2016, the Marine Corps announced that it was investigating the possibility that Bradley was not one of the flag raisers and Schultz was. A fact they confirmed on June 23, 2016. James Bradley has also subsequently stated that he no longer believes that his father was one of the six men in the Rosenthal photograph. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?